Hello and welcome to the episode 259 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we'll investigate the usual array of gigs, two holidays and a couple of recording sessions. On the 16th of September 1960, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed another four and a half hours at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing first residency in town. Same story in 1961. The Beatles, now with Paul McCartney on bass, performed at the Entry Institute in Liverpool for another BK Promotions event. In 1962, we get a nighttime engagement at the Cavern Club for the Beatles, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums. It was the band's 233rd show at the Liverpool venue. And it was finally holiday time in 1963. The Beatles took a well deserved 17 day holiday. John Lennon and his wife Cynthia left for Paris for a romantic trip having never had their honeymoon. They spent two weeks looking around the city doing touristy things, with their son Julian in the care of one of John's aunts in Liverpool, meeting Brian Epstein and Astrid Kirkher during their stay. George Harrison and his brother Peter flew to Benton, Illinois, to visit their sister Louise, who had moved there in 1954. Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr instead flew to Greece with their girlfriends, Jane Asher and Maureen Cox. On the 16th of September 1964, the Beatles played a one-show performance at the City Park Stadium in New Orleans, Louisiana, in front of 12,000 people. In fact, they barely passed through the city for the only New Orleans concert of their career, arriving in the early morning on a chartered plane from Cleveland, Ohio, and leaving during the night for Kansas City. In that short time, though, the Fabs did manage to meet one of their heroes, Fats Domino. In 1966, we find John Lennon still in Paris, this time accompanied by Beatles assistant Neil Aspinall. It was a break in the production of How I Won the War, and John and Aspinall spent it with Paul McCartney and Brian Epstein, who came from London. The group remained together for the weekend. Let's turn to some studio work. In 1967, the Fabs returned at the EMI Studios between 7 pm and 3.45 am to re-record Your Mother Should Know. The aim was to get a stronger sound than the recording they had completed at the Chapel Studios. After 11 takes of the new rhythm track, number 20 to 30, it was up to Paul to decide which was the best version and whether or not the band should complete today's remake. Eventually, he decided that the original recording was better. The session was rounded up with the completion of a rough mix of Blue Jay Way and a copy of both this song and I Am The Warriors so that the production team of Magical Mystery Tour could take them away for the Beatles to mime during the filming. In 1968, we get another busy day in Abbey Road. Between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, sound engineer Ken Scott and tape operator Mike Shady started to compile a title line tape, copying onto a tape every instance in every recording by the Beatles from 1962 in which the band sang the title of the song. It is not clear why the job was overtaken, but it might have been considered for inclusion on the White Album in some edited form. 20 song song titles were copied today. Then, between 7 pm and 3 am, the Beatles, minus George Harrison, recorded 67 takes of the rhythm track of I Will, with Paul McCartney on acoustic guitar and voice, Ringo Starr playing maracas and cymbals, and John Lennon making the beat playing a piece of wood on a metal bar. Between takes, Paul also sang a number of improvised pieces, one of which ended up on the album in a heavy edited form. 
the Can You Take Me Bath snippet that can be heard after Cry Baby Cry and before Revolution 9. The three Beatles also recorded a version of Step Inside Love, a song that Paul had written for Cilla Black, and the improvised Lost Paranoias. These two were released in the Anthology 3 double album in 1996. The session was concluded with a recording of two recorder overdubs on Glass Onion, played by Paul McCartney after the reference to The Fool on the Hill. We can close the episode with the Macklin Music Limited legal request to Northern Songs to re-audit all the royalty statements from the 11th of February 1965, deposited on the 16th of September 1969. Northern Songs, the company which administered the publishing of John Lennon's and Paul McCartney's music, was probably being sold, and Alan Klein, the Beatles' new manager, asked for the re-audit hoping to find some misappropriation of his clients' money through the company they had set up to administer their publishing in the States. Before adjourning our little trip into the history of the Beatles, I'll remind you once again to please visit www.simonmas.com support and check out the many ways in which you can lend your hand to help our community to grow and to help me to keep on producing more and better music-related content. Thank you! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love!